view day class so last time i taught you how to construct a kinematic diagram for a spherical manipulator okay so this is a spherical manipulator with the configuration of rrp revolute revolute prismatic joints okay so our next uh, manipulator is an articulated manipulator a three degrees of freedom articulated spatial manipulator with with the configurations of rrr or or revolute 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 okay so again these are the dh frame rules and this is the uh, assembled uh, joints and links of articulated manipulator okay so first are the link lengths labels and indicators okay. so i will uh, make this uh, faster So link lengths. Okay. Next. Oh, I class. So this is one is for A one. A2, then A3. Okay, A3. Next is, next are the, uh, joint variables and their indicators okay so this is for theta one okay next so we have here two revolute joints so let's uh, draw a broken line an indigo broken line okay for this two okay. so these are the uh, center of rotations for our revolute joints okay next so let's uh, make this a let's make this broken lines Okay. Then the indicator. Okay. And theta two. Then theta three. Okay, this is uh, this is theta three. Okay. Oh, I forgot the uh, another indicator, a counterclockwise arrow. Okay. So we have all we have labeled our links and joints now for our uh, for our DH frame rules. Okay. So first, let's uh, identify the center of our frames. So for our base is the center of gravity. 
for the second revolute joint, the center of rotation. Oh yeah, we just put it here. For our the for our third revolute joint, the center of rotation, and for our uh, end effector. Okay. So let's go to our frame rules. So let's start from the uh, rule 2 ah sorry from rule 1 the z axis must be the axis of rotation for rotation or twisting okay so these are all revolute or twisting joints okay next Okay, so I okay for end effector. Let's just copy the uh, last last uh, z axis before the uh, before the frame of end effector okay then uh, let's make them uh, thick okay 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 Next, is, next are for the the labels. So don't forget the labels. So this is Z zero. This is Z zero. Next is Z one. Z one. Next, Z2. Okay, lastly is Z3. Okay. Next is Rule 2, the X axis must be perpendicular both to its own z-axis and the z-axis of the frame before it okay so this is frame zero so we don't have a frame before it or we don't have z-axis before it so i will uh, assign it at right direction okay next at frame one okay so we have a uh, z axis before there before x sub one uh, own frame so it's uh, z sub zero at, and it's pointing upward while z sub one is pointing to the front so our option is either left or right so i will choose uh, right Next is frame 2. Okay. So we both have uh, Z sub 1 and Z sub 2. They are both uh, pointing forward. So our choices are either upward or downward or right or left. So I am choosing uh, right. Okay. I'm choosing a uh, rightward. So this will be our X sub 2. Okay, let's put it here. Then last is the end effector. Okay. So Z sub 2 and Z sub 3 is both pointing to the front 
So, our only options are top, bottom, left, or right. So, I will choose uh, right. Because based on my uh, experience, this will be make our computation easy. Okay. Or this will make our computation uh, much easier in forward and inverse kinematics. Okay, so this will be our x sub 3. Next is a rule 3. Each x axis must intersect the z axis of the frame before it. So let us uh, leave the, the base frame alone. Okay, so let's go to the second to the frame 1. Okay, so let's try to extend Z sub 0. So it is intersecting to, it is, it is intersecting with X sub 1. Okay, next. So if we intersect Z sub 1, it is not, uh, it will not intersect with X sub 2. But if we, in, if we extend X sub 2, to the left because this is also x sub 2 but negative it will intersect with z sub 1 okay so it's okay x sub 2 is compliant to rule 3 then lastly x sub 3 so if you extended z sub 2 to the front or to the back it will not intersect with x sub 3 but if you Extend x sub 3 to the left because uh, to the left is a negative x sub 3. Okay. It will intersect with z sub 2. So x sub 3 is uh, also complying with the rule 3. Okay. So all, all uh, x sub 3 is uh, compliance to rule 3. Now rule 4. All frames must follow the right hand rule. Okay. So our y axis is color green and uh, much thinner. Okay, for the base, Z is pointing upward, X is pointing to the right. So our y axis is pointing. Backward. Okay. So y sub 0 is pointing backward. Next is uh, frame 1. So our y sub 1. Okay, based on our uh, right hand rule, x sub 1, uh, z sub 1 is pointing to the front. And uh, x sub 1 is pointing to the right. So y sub 1 will point upward. Okay. Based on the right hand rule. Okay. You may uh, try it. Okay. it. Y axis is pointing upward. Okay. So this will be our y sub 1. Next. For frame 2, frame 2 is almost the same with uh, frame 1. So, Z axis pointing at the front, X sub 2 is pointing to the right. So, Y sub 1 will point upward. Okay. So, this will be our Y sub 2. Now, for our end effector, and the end effector is almost the same with uh, the frame of uh, frame 2 and frame 1. So, y sub 3 will also point upward. Okay. okay. 
Okay. So this is the kinematic diagram of articulated manipulator. So let's check it from our previous sample if it's the same. Okay, this is from the uh, research of uh, Saraf and uh, Ponalagu. So Z sub 1, oh, sorry, Z sub 0, Z sub 1, Z sub 2, okay, Z sub 3. Next, uh, okay, he pointed his X sub 0 to the front. But we pointed our X sub 0 to the right. So like this, okay. But it's fine because uh, both, Okay, but uh, base frames are uh, compliant to rule 1. Okay. Y sub 0 is not the same, but it's fine. It is, uh, it's still compliant to rule 1 and rule 4. Okay. So Y for the frame 1, Y and X, the same. Y and X, uh, Y and X for frame 2, and Y and X for frame 3. Okay, so it's the same. It is, uh, they are compliant to our, to our uh, TH frame rules. Okay, so thank you.